There's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about today, so I'll do a quick overview. First of all, I want to talk about the drama surrounding Netflix's Squid Game. Then I want to talk about a hot take from Mooney that's also some helpful advice for new creators. And lastly, I want to talk about the debut of a new VTuber from HyperX. And while I was recording, I uncovered a new story about how any color might be lying as to the reason their virtual concert was canceled, so stay tuned. So first, let's start with the Squid Game story. As you may or may not remember, a year ago, Mr. Beast held Squid Game in real life. It was an incredibly ambitious video, bringing the very entertaining Netflix show Squid Games to life with real contestants replicating all of the challenges from the show, minus all the dying. It was great. People had a great time, he gave a bunch of people a shit ton of money, a good time was had by all. Now when he held this challenge, a lot of people criticized him for missing the point of the show, saying that the show is about the exploitation of common people for entertainment, and here he is exploiting people for entertainment. And I always felt like that was a dumb argument, because it's just a general game show of which people have been doing all the time, it's no more or less exploitative than any other game show, and he's just trying to bring a really cool Netflix show to life. Well, Netflix took a stab at doing the exact same thing a year later, and worse, and Netflix definitely missed the point on this one. Apparently, when Netflix does the same thing as Jimmy a year later with a bigger budget, it is so much worse. People claim that it is cruel and rigged inhumane. So let's dive into the details here. There were 456 contestants willing to compete for a $4.56 million prize. And this show had the bragging rights of boasting the largest cast and largest cash prize in TV history. Nothing to scoff at. But the first day of filming had barely wrapped last Monday when reports began to trickle in about how the show's production was a complete disaster. Quote, it was one of the cruelest, meanest things I've ever been through, one of the contestants tells. We were a human horse race, and they were treating us like horses out in the cold, and the race was fixed. All the torment and trauma we experienced wasn't due to the game or the rigor of the game. It was the incompetencies of scale. They bit off more than they could chew. And apparently, it was so cold on set that people complained that they could not move their feet. And the freezing conditions were so bad that at least 10 people collapsed during the game. And there's also claims in this article saying that the show was absolutely rigged because there were famous influencers on the show and those influencers were allowed to proceed even if they didn't actually meet the same time as other contestants showing blatant favoritism towards their more popular contestants. So when people say Mr. Beast missed the point when he held his game show, no, 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 no. Mr. Beast held a totally valid and entertaining game show. Netflix is a massive corporation that mistreated their contestants because they did not give a fuck about these people abusing them for profit. And that, my friends, is missing the point. That, my friends, that is how you miss the point of Squid Game, by treating your contestants like garbage for profit. On to some lighter news. Let's talk about Meow Moonified for just a moment. So she comes out of the gate absolutely swinging with some fantastic advice. And she says, quote, challenge where companies don't hit me up for free promo and instead they offer to actually pay me to promote them if they want me to shield them out on stream. I count me offering discount codes as this as well. It's free advertising for you, which I 100% agree with. She goes on to say that it's frustrating since I see some of these same companies sponsoring other streamers for real and it's making me raise an eyebrow because I just come across as nice and easy to take advantage of. And she's making a fantastic point. If you are a content creator, your time is valuable. Period. End of story. Unless you specifically want to for whatever reason, there's no reason to give free promo to these companies. If these companies value your time enough to give you these discount codes and ask for promo, then they should be willing to pay for it. And there's also no harm in asking for higher pay than whatever they initially offer you. You can always negotiate. She goes on to clarify that other creators might be newer and not realize that they are being taken advantage of. Don't let this happen. You're worth more than to let someone 
in a corporation, use your platform for free kisses. Before we go on to the next story, I just wanted to briefly plug Writing on Midnight. It is a light novel that I wrote and you can go check it out on Amazon Kindle. I've got a link in the description for where you can purchase this action adventure fantasy novel. I'd really appreciate it and it would really help out the channel if you bought my book. And the last thing I want to cover is something I find genuinely interesting and that is HyperX. HyperX is a video game equipment company. They sell headsets, microphones, mice, keyboards, that sort of thing. But oddly enough, HyperX, the equipment company, decided that they were going to release a VTuber. If I'm pronouncing it correctly, I believe this VTuber's name is Himura Karado. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Hello. Hello. Hi everyone. Um uh, hi. Um and in Mandarin. Um <clears throat> I, I may have spent like half the treasury <laughs> pulling for cute cute waifus and, and hot 2D anime boys. I didn't eat Daikon son. She's up. She's right here on my head. So yeah, what do you guys think about corporations sponsoring new VTubers? I think it's kind of interesting. We're so used to indie VTubers doing their own thing and specific VTuber companies launching VTubers as their main source of content. But I don't see terribly many companies creating a VTuber almost like a mascot and spokesperson for the company while also letting them do normal VTuber stuff. I think it's interesting. So let me know in the comments down below if this is something you want to see more of or if you're inherently less likely to follow them because they exist as a mascot for an already established company. I'm very curious what everybody thinks about this type of VTuber and whether or not you plan on supporting HyperX's new Red Panda VTuber. The next story that I want to cover is that apparently yesterday it was announced that due to scheduling delays caused by circumstances such as coronavirus, we are sorry to announce that Niji Sanji ENAR Live Colors, hashtag pastel stage and hashtag vivid stage is canceled. We sincerely apologize to our fans and we hope for your kind understanding. Now, everyone was pretty broken up that the event was being canceled, but it seems like everybody understood. I mean, COVID's a pretty nasty disease and once an outbreak gets out, you know, it kind of shuts everything down to a grinding halt. But then we get a tweet from Vox Akuma saying, Everyone is so tired. Give your Oshi some love today. We're all devastated by the event being canceled due to COVID skull emoji which kind of implies that the event wasn't actually canceled by COVID. Friend of the channel, VTuber Things, looked into this a little bit more for me and states that other members of Luxium have also made similar comments, at least from what they've seen going around. That's what people are saying. So it kind of sounds like they're using COVID as a scapegoat. And I find this particularly interesting because why lie about the reason you canceled the event? That doesn't make sense, which implies that they're hiding something. Normally, I'm pretty anti-narrative and anti-conspiracy on this channel, aggressively so even. I can't help but feel like, generally speaking, the people who are lying are usually the people at fault. So I can't help but feel like whatever the fuck's going on is probably management's fault. And I believe what he's referring to is Mr. Rhea saying, COVID, huh? Hmm, <clears throat> all right. Sorry to all the fans who are looking forward to an event and all the members who have been caught in this and stressed to hell and back. Hopefully we can all make memories in other ways this year and provide as much entertainment as possible without it. Luca Kaneshiro is simply saying, unfortunate, dot, dot, dot. And while he's not specifically throwing shade, that dot, dot, dot feels a little bit suspicious to me. Ike Evelyn chiming in with, ah, well, I guess there it is. COVID. All right, then. Sure. 
I'm so sorry to everyone who were looking forward to everything. All of us were excited and beyond thrilled to make this happen for you all. We're all just as incredibly let down as you all are. Now, it does seem that I'm not the only one who's feeling a little bit paranoid at all the cagey responses that Luxium is giving, such as Esteban saying, also very funny that EN livers are throwing shade at any color for the stupid COVID excuse, Lamau. Even they know it's BS since the AR live was going to be virtual anyway. Rare Vox W. I knew it wasn't actually because of Miss Rona because why the heck would they cancel an event in two months because someone caught it now in February. It was the most stupid excuse to be honest, but no matter what the actual reason is, I'm just really disappointed in the company right now. It's genuinely pretty bold for livers to actively call their own company out on their bullshit. So ultimately we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, so I'm just going to leave this story off on this tweet saying, I really respect the shade in this tweet. <laughs> I got to admit, so do I. I'll keep you posted if anything relevant pops up. But yeah, that's all I had to say about the news for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Bye, guys.